Hello guys, this is the Medicos library video for you. Topic is Bronchiolitis. Let's begin. Bronchiolitis is a inflammation of the bronchioles, the smallest air passage of the lungs. It usually occurs in children less than 2 years of age, the majority being aged between 3 and 6 months. Types of Bronchiolitis Viral bronchiolitis appear primarily in the infants. Most cases of viral bronchiolitis are due to respiratory syncytial virus. RSV. Viral outbreak occur every winter and affect most children under the age of one year old. Bronchiolitis obliterans is a rare and dangerous condition seen in adults. With this disease carrying of bronchioles blocks the air passage creating an airway obstruction that can't be reversed. Let's see causes. Etiology of the bronchiolitis. Let's see the causes of viral bronchiolitis. Virus that enters and infect the respiratory tract cause viral bronchiolitis. As we know, virus are the microscopic organisms that can reproduce rapidly and challenge the immune system. The following are the common type of viral infections that may cause bronchiolitis. Respiratory syncytial virus is the most common cause of bronchiolitis. It usually strike babies less than one year of age. It is contagious and dangerous viral infection produce inflammation, mucus and swelling in the airways. Adenovirus This virus target mucous membrane and cause approximately 10% of acute respiratory tract infections in children. Influenza virus This virus causes inflammation in the lungs, nose and throat. Influenza affects both adults and children. It is especially dangerous for babies who don't have strong immune system. Let's see the Causes of bronchiolitic albitron. This rare condition sometimes occurs for no known reason. Severe causes can lead to death if they are left untreated. A few causes have been identified and include fumes for chem chemical agents such as ammonia, bleach and chlorine, respiratory infection, adverse reaction to medication. Risk factors. Viral bronchiolitis can affect children younger than 2 years old, but it is generally occurring in infants from 3 to 9 months of age. A few risk factors of viral bronchiolitis in babies and young children are not being breastfed, being born prematurely, or born with heart or lung disease conditions, having a dispersed immune system, being exposed to cigarette smoke, being in crowded places where the virus may be present, such as daycare centers. Common risk factors for Bronchiolitic albitrons in adults are working conditions that expose dangerous chemicals, a heart, lung, or bone marrow transplant, a connective tissue disease. Pathophysiology of bronchiolitis. There are two stages in the pathophysiology of bronchiolitis. First is early and next is late. Early affects the upper airways, whereas late affects the lower airways. Let's begin with early. Early affects the upper airways. Virus enters into upper airways, infects, which causes the infection of the epithelium, which leads to inflammation of the bronchioles, and ultimately leads to the appearance of the symptoms. Virus late. Due to the inflammation, the secretion of mucus takes place in the bronchioles, which causes the mucus plug. Mucus plug leads to the complication expi complicated expiration and cause wheezing. Due to the inflammation, Dead cells accumulate in the alveoli and causes the air trapping. E even though in air trapping, the exchange of O2 and CO2 from the capillary to alveoli takes place, which causes the mixing of the CO2 and O2 in the alveoli, thus leads to hypoxemia, fatigue, and lethargy. Let's see the symptoms of bronchiolitis. First is runny nose. Congestion, cough, low grade fever, difficulty breathing, wheezing, otitis media. Let's see the diagnosis. Clinical definition. The diagnosis of bronchiolitis is a clinical one based on typical history and findings on physical examination. Let's see the diagnostic values of clinical characteristics. First value is age. Bronchiolitis may affect the infant under 2 years of age, especially in the months of 6, six to 9 months. And next is fever. Infant with bronchiolitis may have fever or history of fever. High fever is uncommon in bronchiolitis. Rhinorrhea. Nasal discharge often precedes the onset of other symptoms such as cough, tachypnea, respiratory distress, and feeling difficulties. Cough. A dry wheezing cough is characteristic of bronchiolitis.
cough along with nasal symptoms is one of earliest symptoms to occur in the bronchitis. Respiratory rate Increased respiratory rate is an important symptom in the lower respiratory tract infection and particularly in the bronchiolitis and pneumonia. Poor feeding Many infants with bronchiolitis having feeding difficulties due to dyspnea but poor feeding is not essential for diagnosis of bronchiolitis. Next value is increasing work of breathing and recession. Dyspnea and subcostal, intercostal and supraclavicular recession are common seen in the infant with acute bronchiolitis. Crackles and cryptations. Fine respiratory crackles in all lung fields are common. Wheezing. High pitch respiratory wheezing as a common but not universal examination finding. Apnea. Apnea can be present feature of the bronchiolitis, especially in the young and in premature or low birth infants. Investigations. Oxygen saturation plus oximetry should be performed in the every child who attend hospital with acute bronchiolitis. Infant with oxygen saturation less than 92% require inpatient care. Infant with oxygen saturation greater than 94% in the room air may be considered for discharge. Blood gas analysis may be capillary or arterial. It not usually indicated in the acute bronchiolitis. It may be have a role in assessment of infant with severe respiratory distress or who are trying or may be entering respiratory failure. Chest X-ray. Chest X-ray should not perform in the patient with typical acute bronchiolitis. Hematology. Full blood count is not indicated in the assessment and management of infant with typical acute bronchiolitis. Biological testing. Rapid testing for RSV is recommended in the infant who require admission to hospital with acute bronchiolitis. Bacteriological testing. Routine bacteriological testing may be blood and urine is not indicated in the infant with typical acute bronchiolitis. Bacteriological testing of urine should be considered in febrile infant less than 60 days old. Biochemistry testing. Urine, urea and electrolytes. Measurement of urea and electrolyte is not indicated in the routine assessment and management of infant with typical acute bronchiolitis but should be considered in those with severe diseases. C-reactive protein. Treatment. Antivirals. Example, nebulizer ribavirin. Antibiotics. Nebulizer epinephrine. Uh, and uh, anti-inflammatories. Inhaled bronchiolators are not recommended for the treatment of acute bronchiolitis in infants. Hospital-based supplement therapies. Physiotherapy. Chest physiotherapy using vibration and percussion is not recommended in the infant hospital with acute bronchiolitis who are not admitted to intensive care. Nasal section should be used to clear secretion in the infant hospital with acute bronchiolitis who experience respiratory discharge due to nasal blockage. Maintaining fluid balance hydration. Common surgeries are to be commence small frequent feed, nasogastric or orogastric feeding or intravenous fluids. Oxygen. Infant with oxygen saturation levels less than 92% or who have severe respiratory discharge or sinusitis should receive supplemental oxygen by nasal caniculae or face mask. Face mask. Continuous positive airway pressure and negative pressure ventilation. Early discussion with the periodic intensive care unit and introduction of respiratory support should be considered in all patients with severe respiratory distress or apnea. Treatment of bronchiolitis albutrans. There is no cure for scattering bronchiolitis albutrans. Corticosteroids can help to clear the lung of mucus, reduce inflammation and open up the airways. Patient may need oxygen treatment and medication to be boost the immune system. Breathing exercise and stress reduction can be help ease breathing difficulties. A lung transplant may be best option for the most severe case of lung damages. I hope this video helps you. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.